we're going to look quickly at compression efficiency. So just to be clear, we're not going to cover specifically how to export a compressed image format, but rather we're going to take a look at a couple of optimization techniques that we can apply to our images before we try and export them in order to reduce their overall file size. Let's use this image as an example. So if I go to File and choose Export, then move my format across to JPEG, so let's say we're exporting for web, I get an estimated file size of 11.82 megabytes. So traditionally the way we would try and reduce the file size is to experiment with the quality slider. If I bring quality down to 90, you can see we get a significant reduction in the estimated file size. However, we haven't yet looked at this image to see how we might be able to optimize it. So let's cancel out of the export dialog, and I'm just going to zoom into an area of the image. So as you can see here, the background is quite noisy. So noise is random, and it's also high frequency detail, both of which will contribute to a higher file size. What we can do then before we export is denoise our image. So we can do this destructively by going to Filters, Noise, and Denoise. Or we could do it non-destructively by going to Layer, New Life Filter Layer, Noise, and Denoise. I'll use the non-destructive approach. And as we can see on the Layers panel, it's added a Noise Reduction Live Filter Layer. So I'm just going to zoom in even further, and then just bring the Luminance slider up until we get rid of the majority of that noise. Okay, I can then close that live denoise dialog down, and the beauty of this being a layer is that at any point I can hide it and get my original noise profile back. Let's enable that, and then we will see what happens when we go to File and Export. So we'll just give it time to calculate the estimated file size, but this is going to be smaller than the original 11.82 megabytes. There we go. So 7.67 megabytes. And of course this has a knock-on effect, so if we reduce our quality to 90, we get an even smaller file size than the 2 megabytes, roughly, that we had before. So that's one approach, is to denoise your image before exporting. Another approach is kind of the opposite. This is a focus merge, or a focus stack image, and it has a lot of high frequency content or detail. And that's going to increase the file size. If we go to File, Export, and just bring our quality to 100, we can see here the estimated file size is 32.48 megabytes, which is huge. So let's just zoom into this image and see if we can't reduce that. This time I will use a Gaussian Blur filter, so I'll go to Layer, New Life Filter Layer, Blur, and choose Gaussian Blur. So what we want to do is find a nice balance where we don't lose that sharpness and clarity at 100% zoom. So let's try a radius of one pixel to start with. Okay. So bearing in mind, we are zoomed in quite far at the moment. If we come out to 100%, so that's Command-1 or Control-1 on Windows, you'll see we've still got a decent amount of sharpness and clarity there. Let's just hide that Gaussian blur so we can see the original image and then the blurred version. So again, because this is a live filter layer, it gives us the chance to experiment with different values until we find a suitable balance where the resulting image is still sharp enough for our tastes. Okay, let's try exporting this instead. So File, Export, and just wait for it to calculate the file size. There we go, a reduced file size. And, as before, this also has an impact if we reduce the quality slider, so we can get even smaller file sizes. So there we go, just a couple of techniques to look at when you're exporting your images for web and you're trying to just optimize them a little bit more for reduced file sizes.